Hi everyone, my name is Terri Ann Nikitas. I'm Senior Instructor of Breakthrough One under the umbrella of the International Body Talk System. So I thought I'd talk a little bit about Breakthrough. We have a course coming up or I'm giving a course online. It'll be on Zoom the 11th of November uh, for four days, 9 a.m. Eastern to 1 p.m. Eastern. So what we do this is if you are ever triggered. So you can think about for a moment, what is a trigger? And very often people say a trigger is something that sets me off. A trigger is something that ends up pushing one of my buttons and the person could explode externally, implode, and then there's this massive dynamic going on within us. So if you ever think about it just for a moment, you might notice there's victim blame consciousness. You might have heard talk in so many different systems that we we start to blame everyone else. We blame everyone for how we feel or we blame ourselves. That's part of it too, because usually in the end, we are our own worst enemy because no matter what's going on in the world, it's oneself that has a reaction or an overreaction to the world. So you might react or you might overreact. When we react, something might come at us, like a, I don't know, a car's coming at you, you react, you jump out of the way. You fall down the stairs, you react, you grab something. Somebody comes in and, you know, hits you and you might react by putting, putting your hand back. Or we could react at our speech. And then we overreact by what we said. So, what we do in Breakthrough is it's really, you know, not just a system. You know, people often say, okay, we're going to learn this technique and go off and use it. Well, the thing with Breakthrough is it's very much like Eastern mysticism but, and Eastern self-investigation that is really applied for the Western mind. So we are better able to ask ourselves questions and answer them. So I've asked you a question, what's a trigger? Think about it and then answer it for yourself. So if you give an example that doesn't tell you what, what a trigger is, if you state stories about when you're triggered, it doesn't state what a trigger is. So you wouldn't be answering the question. This is one difficult thing that we have um, is that we assume. So when we're asked a question, we make assumptions about the question and then we don't really read the question or listen to the question and we don't answer clearly. Okay, if you got a, a nice intellect that's working properly for you, you'll hear a question and you will answer that question based on exactly what the question is without making any assumptions. So you think for a moment, if we start assuming, so you're in the kitchen and your partner triggers you. And you assume what they mean by that trigger. You have no, you don't care how they're feeling. You don't care about their own state or you overly care about it. And you're thinking about how to control their state. It could be either way. And when you do this, you're making an assumption. You don't ask a question and likely you don't even communicate, right? So everything in your world, everything that you feel, everything that you're experiencing is your own personal experience from your perspective. And you could say, until it's not, until you see things exactly as they are. So usually we assume something or, and or, they usually go hand in hand. We take things personally. So if you want the attention from your partner, or you need your partner to understand you for the moment, it's all about oneself. Right? So, oh, I need attention now. This is what I want. And then we start speaking from that, that place, from that assumption and assuming the other should do what we want them to do. Oh my, right? This is where we get into conflict. And sometimes we blame ourselves or we blame the other for our experience and how we, we feel. And we do it over and over again. It's like hitting our head against a brick wall and nothing ever changes. You know, it might feel like it's changed for a period of time and then you're right back apparently at step one, because you never saw the, the source, you never really looked at the dynamic of what's going on in your conflict and your defensiveness, and you start blaming the other. Uh, and then we kind of spiral 
out of control the moment we're triggered, right? Uh, you know, sometimes we can sit there and say, I suppress my emotions and, you know, then I find something to do. It still bothers me, but I'll find what I can do. Well, that's fine that you know what to do, but you're still bothered by it. So you need to find out what the heck is going on, right? So in, in Breakthrough, we come to a place where we're looking at what we're identified with. So we have, you know, this buildup of defenses that are these contradictory beliefs about something. And we think we've got it all organized and we're so certain we know the facts and we're so certain we know who's to blame. We've already set up this defensive court case against the other or against ourselves. We can do it towards ourselves as well. We can have it all assessed and not think properly. We've got all this contradictory evidence. We're making a conclusion based on an assumption. It's, as I take a deep breath, you know, it's quite uh, terrifying how quickly we condemn ourselves or the other through this blame victim consciousness. So when we live in blame victim consciousness, you could say you're your own worst enemy because you're never going to get out of it. You're going to constantly be blaming the other or yourself, and you're constantly the victim. They go hand in hand. You can't blame without being the victim. There's, there's no way. So, you know, you could spiral under out of control, or you could try and suppress it all, but the trigger comes back, right? It just keeps coming back. Sometimes it could take a year. Sometimes it could take a few years. And that same old trigger comes back. And you have no idea why, so let me just play this, place it on the other. It's them. It's their stuff. But it's happening to oneself. So if I'm triggered, it's happening to me. It's not happening to anybody else. If somebody's doing something, you know, if it rains and you go outside and you love it, you're not going to be triggered. If you have a very, you know, I don't, but, you know, very... Uh, intense identity with your hair and you're going somewhere special and it rains and your hair gets wet, you could be very upset. It could trigger you. But it's going to rain. That's life. It's going to rain. You get an umbrella, all right, uh, but the damp might bring your hair down. There are a lot of people triggered just by hair. Uh, you know, I'm an instructor. I trigger, trigger people quite often. And I know it's not about me. I have, you know, I understand compassionately that I've triggered some identity in them. Something that is ready to come to the surface. Let's say to be acknowledged. That's a little, you know, metaphorical or a story. But usually when we're triggered, it is a moment that something is ready to be healed. And usually we cope with it. You know, we can hide it, suppress it, or we, you know, think it's just gonna go away, which Often it does, you know, we don't have as an intense reaction three days later. We may, but sometimes, you know, three days go by, we calm down, the emotions have calmed down, you know, you feel a little bit better. So you kind of go, okay, that's done. It was just a moment in time. And then it cycles right back. So I'd like to say if you're curious, curiosity is so important in this work you're curious about what's going on and you want to ask questions about what's going on with you, we'll, we'll do that. We spend, you know, almost a, you know, one class and half a class exploring all of the different things that, you know, get us to be defensive and all of our proofs, right? Because we'll, we'll set up a, a court case immediately. We're very quick and we it could be condemning ourselves or condemning the other. If we start looking at all of this, just the fact of observing it and studying it begins to allow us to um, look at our reactions differently, our overreactions differently. We'll begin to, um, I've had people come to, I used to give a lot of introductory talks and they weren't able to take the course that weekend. Let's say I was in a different country and they couldn't take it. Um, they, they have told me even 10 years later that just coming to the public talk was um, revelatory. You know, they were able to see things about themselves that they hadn't seen before. So we're going to do that. 
uh, in the first two days. I've added a few hours to the class. It's usually three hours, but we're going to be doing four hours, which gives us time to, you know, work a little bit more in depth with our defensiveness, right? Uh, defensiveness is obviously not a protection. Protecting yourself is natural, but defensiveness becomes this, you know, driven, you know, emotionally driven victim blame consciousness, right? We keep doing it over and over again. So if you're curious at all and you want to explore this and just remember this work, as I said at the beginning, is not just I, I go to this class and I learn this technique. This isn't the way this works. This is a journey. It is part of your a journey to self-realization. So we call it a pathway. So once you open up this pathway, you have a lot of ways to investigate. There are a lot of different classes you can continue taking. There are a lot of teachers who give lectures and talks. And you, all of our talks are interactive. We don't just, you know, that's what makes talking on here a little bit difficult because you just have to speak for yourself. Whereas usually, you know, we talk a little bit maybe half an hour, and then the next part is completely interactive because we need that dynamic to be able to explore. So this is real self-investigation. We explore as a group, and the group supports each and every one of us, including myself as an instructor. Otherwise, I think, you know, if I ever came to the end of this work, I don't know if I'd ever, you know, continue teaching. I, I keep teaching because it's for me as well right there's a, there's something we keep learning uh unlearning actually we keep unlearning all of the assumptions we have about life and slowly we disidentify from the from our self-image we all have some self-image that if somebody triggers that self-image if you think you're smart and somebody triggers that self-image -im you're gonna overreact uh you could be passive aggressive when somebody is a little bit smarter than you. I've seen that so often that, you know, you'll have a table of people, one person is really smart showing their knowledge and then someone else comes in and is quite, uh, quite intelligent and adept at speaking and questioning and they will trigger the other person who will just shut down completely and become passive aggressive and even leave. I've seen this happen so often. Leave the dinner table or leave the, the room and say, hey, you know, that person isn't smart, they're stupid. And they weren't, they were quite intelligent, they had a lot to say, a lot of questions to pose, and yet here's, my, here's the defense. I've seen many individuals do that. My defense is they are stupid. Meanwhile, they never heard what the other person said because they're so triggered. I could give you so many examples of, of triggers and the defense mechanisms. So if you'd like to join me, I think, uh, I think you'll have a lot of fun. Uh, of course, it's, it can be, you know, quite intense as well, but, you know, we play doing this work. We investigate like kids and we, we see exactly how we operate. And you can keep doing this for the rest of your life or until you're fully self-realized and you're no longer triggered. So I welcome you to attend November 11th. You can contact me at uh, leurbanretreat at gmail.com or go to my website. I'll put the link in the description. Thank you and have a great day. Bye.